So Olokum told you is the ocean, and so she's associated with the riches of the ocean and cowrie shells, okay, in form of money. And so in many ways, she is the source of Ashe. She's one of the main sources of Ashe when it comes to uh, cowrie readings at Karakol, Dilogun. Now, it's ironic because Olokun doesn't speak herself through Dilogun. Okay, you can't uh, read people with uh, Olokun shells. You can't feed Olokun, you know, a goat or anything to get any ta. Okay, she doesn't actually speak herself with, with her shells through, uh, but Olokun is always speaking no matter whose shells you're using. Okay, you can call, uh, you know, if you really wanted to, you can call Dilogun Olokun. Hey, I'm going to read you with Olokun. And all technically, it's not Olokun shells. All shells are Olokun because they come from her. It's the Ashe, the water. A thing to understand in, in African spirituality is that water is the conduit for all spirits. Okay? Whenever you see a priest praying, you're going to always, uh, almost 99% of the time, then it takes some water and pour it on the floor first to invoke that spirit. Okay? Because water is the channel by which spirits travel. And you're going to see it, in, you know, keep that in your head. Keep that in your mind. You're just going to observe it over and over and over again. Okay? So, Olokun is a, a great spirituality. She's the water conduit which the Orishas can travel through. She is the water conduit which the Egun can uh, travel through. Uh, so, you're going to see a lot of people saying, Olokun is an Egun, a spirit of the dead, or Olokun has a lot to do with the spirits of the dead. That is uh, very much true uh, for many reasons. The most important, I believe, is that she's water, and all spirits travel through water. Okay? Um, there's also the obvious uh, that the ocean itself is also a cemetery and therefore sacred in that respect. Okay? Uh, a lot of people have died at that sea and never been found, and, and so the ocean is a burial ground and so we should respect it not just as the womb of the world the womb of life we should respect it as also a resting place for ancestors uh you know for whatever reason uh died at the ocean so alokun is you know worshipped very widely and part of the worship of alokun is going to the ocean and it goes without saying, I'm going to the details of the actual ceremony. But just so you just to give you an idea of how Orisha worship works. When let's say you want to worship a local and you don't live near an ocean, well what do you do? Well, the first tape I the first video I said Okay, Olokun owns all water. So if you live near a river, you can, you know, Praise Olokun by the river. If you live near a lagoon, you can praise Olokun by the lagoon. Okay? If you're by a lake, you can praise Olokun by a lake. You know, anybody who says that Olokun is limited to the ocean, okay, and granted, ocean's big, that's hardly a limitation. Uh, they don't understand Olokun yet. They, you know, Olokun owns all water, okay? So wherever there's water, there's Olokun. Okay, sweet water, salty water, stagnant water, flowing water, you know, uh, hot water, cold water. That's Olokun. Okay? Now, one thing you've noticed that I've always referred to Olokun as a she, and you may have read or heard that Olokun is a he, and I'll clarify that. My Olokun and the Olokun of all Orisha priests, all you know, anybody who's crowned about the Laya, Maya, Chun, Chango, the Olokun they received, 100%, 1,000% is considered a female energy. Okay? Uh, well, female or not, I, you know, I, I don't know. Energy is energy. Male or female, that's, uh, I won't get into there. But, you know, we give them human form uh, in our minds to better understand them. And Olokun that I, that's, that I have, okay, that I can trace it back all the way from, from Africa, okay, is definitely female, okay. My, uh, my Olokun is from the lineage of Fermina Gomez Ochabi. She was not an African born. She was born in Cuba, Criolla. But she received Olokun from Ma Monserrate 
Obatero. And Obatero was a priestess of Shango, who is also responsible for having brought Olokun, one of the major people of having brought Olokun from Cuba, from Africa to Cuba and establishing Olokun's worship in Cuba. And her, that Olokun is female. That lineage, that entire lineage of Ochabi, of Obatero. Remember, Obatero is the originator of the Pimienta, of the Culo Verde, Cru Verde, Piranha. All those lineages stem one way or another from that line. So if you're any one of those, if you're Fucha, Tikeke, your Olokun is female. Okay? And... So I understand that uh, Babalao, they have a different Olokun from us. Uh, you know, very, you know, just has a lot of the same qualities, owner of the ocean, but it, it appears to be a very different Olokun. Okay, our Olokun is distinctly female. Okay. Um, uh, there's many ways we know that she's female. Yeah, we have her in Pataki depicted as being married to male Orisha. Okay, that would be difficult if she were a man. Okay, uh, in Ogbedi, married to Uri um, you know, in Obeyono, married to uh, Olosa. Um, um, oh no, sorry, Olosa, that's the, um, that's the Babalao version, right? Cause in, in Babalao's, Olosa's a female, okay. But, you know, you go to Ileife in Nigeria, Today, you can go there today, the source of the all our faith, right? And you can ask you, Olokun, well, Olokun was married to Odua, right? Olokun was the main and eldest wife of Odudua, right? And the whole story was, you know, that you know, Olokun couldn't give Odua children, so um, Olosa, or Osara, uh, ended up bearing children on behalf of Olokun and gave Odua children. So, you know, even in the source, in the root of our faith, where our religion comes from, is female. Now, if you go to another place called, uh, you know, the Bini, uh, they're not Yoruba, they're not Lukumi, they're cousins of the Lukumi, but they're not Lukumi themselves. Their Olokun is a guy, is a male, okay? But our Olokun definitely does not descend from there. Uh, I don't think the ones that Babalao has either, but, you know, that's for them to explain and not me. Um, Olokun. So who has to receive Olokun? It seems like everybody at some point ends up having to receive a locum because it's such an integral part you know when our religion was established in Cuba our lineage is a locum was such an important Orisha to Obatero that you know it ended up being such an important part for everybody now the only people that absolutely have to have it are obviously if it comes out in divination uh, in a reading okay then okay you have to receive it or if you're a child of Yamaya you have to receive it you know, everybody will receive one day. It's a beautiful Orisha to have, uh, to be a devotee of.